All right, welcome back, everyone, to another what I hopefully be interesting lecture, short lecture here, Constantine. Uh, and this great question I'm going to answer as we go through this lecture at the end, especially, is he the most important Roman emperor? And not only is he the most important em Roman emperor, is he one of the most important figures in all of Western civilization history? And so Constantine is a name that a lot of my students are familiar with. When I lecture on ancient Rome, a lot of people are like, I've never heard of Claudius. I've never heard of some of these other Roman emperors, uh, Diocletian, but I've heard of Constantine. And so I wanna kind of give you a little bit of background, how he came into power. And then of course the core issue, which is going to elevate him to become this incredibly important individual in Western civilization history and Rome and the debate about it too. There's an interesting kind of discussion and debate about it as well, which I think is important to look at. So let's start with looking at our first kind of a map here and kind of a bit background. So it was around the year 300 AD that the Roman Empire had been divided. And when I say divided, not into East and Western Rome, but more politically divided. There was a Roman emperor named Diocletian at the time. He had created something called the Tetrarchy. I cover this in much more detail in a previous lecture of mine or another one of my lectures. Um, and you know, he basically created two separate administrative units in Rome, in East and the West. And there were reasons why he did that. But what this does begin to do is create kind of a divide between the East and the West. And not a surprise, when Diocletian died as Roman emperor, this whole tetrarchy system is gonna fall into conflict and fighting, and there's gonna be one person who takes control of the East, there are gonna be a couple people who try to fight for the West. And it is under this moment of time that you see the rise of Constantine. The other key thing that I want to talk about as this is all developing is Christianity, because it is also during this moment of time around the year 300 AD that the Christian faith, which has been around for about 300 years now, of course, was still being persecuted in Roman history. It's still during the time of Diocletian. If you were a Christian and you came out publicly and said you were a Christian, it would not be a good time for you. Right. And so that's also going on in this period of time as well. So how does this all relate to Constantine? Well, let's take a look. So Constantine, you know, these years between 312 and 337 is going to play a significant role first in the West and then in the East in all of Rome. So when Diocletian had died, what happens is this man named Licinius, he's going to take control of the Eastern part of Rome. The Western part of Rome, there's going to be a conflict between two men. Constantine and this other man named Maxentius. And what is key about this is a big battle that's going to be fought between them in the year 312 AD. This is known as the Battle of Milvian Bridge. And in this battle, there's going to be a conflict between these two men. Now, the battle is important, but what happens right before the battle is even more important. Because according to accounts, Constantine has some sort of vision or dream, and he sees this symbol that you see up here as well. The symbol is called the Cairo. It's not Chai, it's Cairo. It's the Chi is the kind of what looks like, it's, these are Greek letters, kind of looks like the X, the Rho over here you can see up here. Sometimes it's drawn slightly differently, so you may have seen kind of slightly different versions of this image before. But it, it represents Christianity, the first two letters of the word Christ in the Greek alphabet, Cairo. And so this was a Christian symbol, which Constantine, who was still at the point, moment pagan, Constantine was not Christian. He was still following the polytheistic gods of Rome. He himself took this symbol and told his men, put this symbol on your shields. They had this battle of Milvian Bridge and Constantine won. Not only was Constantine victorious, Maxentius was defeated. He was beheaded. Um, so it was pretty brutal. And Constantine wins control of the West. Later on, by 324, he'll take control of the East as well. And so he becomes this dominant figure in Rome. Now, what happens as a result of this? This other map we've been looking at as we've been telling this story, this is a map of Christianity in Rome. And if you look at it carefully, everything you see in the pockets of orange represent Christianity, you know, basically right up to the period of time before Constantine. 
Everything you see in the orange and the green, which is basically the whole map here, is areas of Christianity over the next couple hundred years. And so, in other words, the Roman Empire, which was only maybe 5-10% Christianized, is about to become heavily more Christianized. And that has a lot to do with what Constantine is about to do, because in the year 313, right after the Battle of Milvian Bridge, Constantine, who is now this powerful figure in Rome in the West and later in the East as well, will issue what is called the Edict of Milan. And what is the Edict of Milan? Well, it's pretty simple. It's an edict of religious toleration for Christians. And so now, if you are a Christian inside the Roman Empire, you can practice your faith, you'll no longer be persecuted, and then boom, you see this massive spread of Christianity. Now, this leads to what we call the kind of the great debate. And if you talk to historians who teach exclusively this history of this period of time, the end of the middle, ancient world, modern Middle Ages, they constantly have this great debate of whether it was Constantine's action that was the, the key event that allowed Christianity to spread, you know, first in Europe, and then globally, of course, right? There are over about 2 billion Christians in the world today if you take all the different denominations and you put them together. And you would say, well, if Constantine didn't convert, and later Constantine himself will convert to Christianity as well. So first you have the battle, just to get the chronology straight. Then you have the Edict of Milan. And then later on, Constantine will convert to Christianity. And so when this happens, you see a tremendous growth. And so people go, well, okay, that means it's because of Constantine you have this tremendous growth of the Christian faith in Europe and then again throughout the Western civilization and beyond. However, the debate is that Constantine may have already seen this happening, that instead of the Christian faith spreading because of Constantine, that instead Constantine saw the Christian faith spreading and he wanted essentially get on the bandwagon that he wanted to be on that side that was going to win. He sees the momentum growing in it, which is true, and he wanted to be part of that. And so there's this debate, Is it's like the chicken and an egg, what came first? Was it Constantine's Edict of Milan and conversion to Christianity that made Christianity spread, or was it the fact that Christianity was already spreading that Constantine said, I want a piece of this and I want to be part of this, and he joined the Christian faith? So in terms of the answer, you know, you'll get people debate this back and forth. And the way I look at it, honestly, folks, is probably a little bit of both. That there's no doubt that, you know, Christianity was growing and had some momentum during these years. But there is also no doubt that when the emperor issues an edict of this magnitude and then converts to Christianity himself, that too will greatly increase the, the, the likelihood of Christianity spreading. So definitely Constantine is a key figure in history. You know, I definitely would consider him one of the more important figures in all of history, especially Roman history, uh, but it's an interesting discussion. Now there's a lot more to Constantine, a lot of other issues with the Christian faith, issues that are pretty fascinating uh, that take place, which I cover in some of my other lectures. So please, you know, I really hope you, you enjoyed this. You found this kind of interesting little quick background on Constantine uh, informative, and there's a lot more other stuff I have on my channel. So feel free to please take a look, subscribe, uh, all the good things that, you know, we want people to be able to watch as many of this material as possible. I've, I've, it's been just wonderful being able to reach more people with these lectures. So uh, that's kind of the goal. All right, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And that's it.